Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, a podcast for Guitar Dads by Guitar Dads. This week, Nick Mars is loyal to the lie. The 90s are really back. Line 6 whittles it down. Harley Benton turns it up in loving what you have. Does distance make the heart grow fonder? This week on the Guitar Dads Podcast. Now, the dudes who secretly can't stand each other in real life, Matt and Dave. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Matt. Don't laugh. I'm Dave. Don't <laughs> laugh. That's true. It's true and you know it. It's a little bit true. That's why Dave and I do this remotely because we can't stand to be in the same room as each we'll other. Just, yeah. It will just come to blows. It'll come to blows and that, and that yep. wouldn't be nice. Wouldn't be good for the pod. Maybe it would be great for the pod, actually. Be Dave, fantastic for it. the pod. Maybe we should do it. So here we are. We did try to stage a fight once, and because neither one of us can keep a straight face, it just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> did we? Did we try yeah, to we stage a, a fight? Remember, I, I, I On the podcast, out. you mean. Yeah, yeah. I stormed Oh, out. yes, yes. You did. That's right. We did try to do it. <laughs> Turns out we're not very good actors, so no. that's why you can rest assured that everything you hear on this podcast is, is real. It's real. It's totally It's real, real and raw. And you know what also is real is our listeners and our loyal listeners. Thank you guys very much for <laughs> tuning in each and every week. And if you're new, hey, thanks for checking us out. Keep coming back. Yeah. We'll try to give you, give it to you every single week. You know where you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Guitar Dads Podcast. Come join the private group. Um, and if you so choose, please go over to patreon.com slash Guitar Dads Podcast where you can support the show uh a number of different tiers over there so yeah, yes now that we got that kind of done and uh cool let's uh shall we get do you get anything else no i think that's good don't forget the patreon thank you everybody and thank you to our patrons who make this possible yes. so and you do get an extra episode just another reminder there you go yep. we'll say you it again do. at the end too in case you forget okay <laughs> here we go right. where are we Into going into the dataverse. Hold on, stand by. <laughs> there it is. All right, hey. now we are officially into the dataverse. All right, we did um, we did talk about uh, Creed a week ago or two weeks ago. Yeah, last week we just um, talked about the '90s week. revival that's going on. And we we, they, so. we talked about them on the summer of '99 cruise, which they're doing two of them. Yep. But now they have announced a massive summer tour, and the '90s really are back, and in a couple other bands too. But this is a pretty big tour, and they got a number of supporting acts kind of spreading out over the course of the entire thing, um, including Three Doors Down, Tonic, yep. Switchfoot, Daughtry, and a few others. Yeah, so a um, lot of so these bands were on that cruise that is yep. happening or happened did it happen i don't even know i think it's happening um, it hasn't happened it's yet. happening um maybe the spring or something so yeah so of course as we suspected the tour has been announced it's all happening and um yeah there you go you can have your self 90s up we actually did a um a where are they now or whatever happened to with tonic whatever happened um, to with tonic yeah yeah with tonic and uh, did we do three doors down that's another we should actually do no. a whatever happened to three doors down but but we can't really do whatever happened to if they're now on tour with creed because it's like whatever happened to them? well they're on tour with creed <laughs> well we can talk <laughs> well we <laughs> so can talk about go. what wh where they've been and then end it with that oh we could know? okay all right maybe we can do that um so yeah so but anyway yeah, we can, did do tonic you can get your 90s like i don't know what we call this alt rock it's not even really alt rock it's like no, 90s mainstream it's rock 90s mainstream <laughs> rock yeah. now but fuel so but kick... fuel is missing from this list and fuel is on the it cruise is. so i'm yes. a little bit upset because i would rather go and see and see fuel and to tell you the truth i actually did like a lot of three doors down songs i, did I thought they were pretty good yeah i actually liked them um, back in the day. And Daughtry, I actually think, is fantastic as well. So, yeah, but Fuel um, isn't even with the original singer, so I don't. it wouldn't even be Yeah, that's like, a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a know? good point. And we did great. do a Whatever Happened to Fuel yes. um, back back on the pod. So, yeah, so I'm a little yeah. bit bummed out Fuel isn't there, but that's all right. Um, all these other bands are here, and, yeah, you know, that's what it is. It would be, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool, though, if there was more of like a um, – more of like like a grunge tour that happened. Like, why isn't that's there like kind a? Of, I mean, why isn't that like kinda, a grunge? I think tour? that's kind of common. Grunge tour I, is more like early. Th this is late '90s into the early 2000s, is what this is well, really. Green Day. Green Day just announced a massive stadium tour. 
Well, that's um, true. Green Day and Blink 182. Blink 182 is out yeah, there. Blink 182. So you're and a, it. Yeah, a lot of these bands never really slowed down, like Pearl Jam, no. you know, Soundgarden. Yep. Um, you know, wasn't super active, but they would occasionally get together um, before Chris Cornell died. Um, same with um, Allison Chains. You know, Allison Chains yeah. has been kind of active for Still a going, while after after Lane hard. died. But Lane died so yep. long ago that you know. Um, so I don't know. I feel like it would be cool if you know. I don't know who who would he- and, you know. I think STP is still going. They got a they, they have a singer as well. It's kind of when you who think about sounds it, sounds just like just sounds just like uh, like Wyland to me. I mean, yeah, I know he's like, very but similar. He sounds very yeah, similar. he's very yeah. similar. I, I think it'd be cool. I mean, I think STP actually did go out on tour and maybe brought out like some other kind of more on the fringe grunge bands. If grunge bands, they if did, I'm not and mistaken. I want to. Keep yeah. talking about that because I'm gonna look this up. I think this yeah, is look, over look the that summer. up, see what you can find. But I think it would be cool if there was like more oh, of like Who a. They go out with. I don't want to say. F- oh, it was the festival. Pumpkins. Oh, was, was it with the pumpkins? pumpkins? Oh, yeah. was it the pumpkins? Yeah. So here's the thing: like all those really popular grungy bands. No, the pumpkins went out and they were supported by the pilot by Stone Temple Pilots and Rival Sons. Oh, that's right. If that's you remember right. that, yes. Yeah. So it's almost like those bands are like too. They're they're more established, you know, than say like these these bands that are supporting Creed. So um, and they never really slow down as much. But I think I think it would be cool if there was like a grungy a festival or something where just all these bands played the Pumpkins, Pearl Jam. Um, you know, I would even throw even though Green Day wasn't like a grunge band, throw them in there too. Blink One Day, do like a. Put the pop punk people in there too. Why the hell not? Um, that would be. Wouldn't that be incredible? That'd be incredible. I think it's coming. I honestly do because I think you see these this revival of you know we we saw it with the sixties and the seventies and now in the eighties. Yeah. And now the nineties are here, so I think you're gonna see stuff like this. And I don't know how big. Uh, maybe they do a, a single festival or I don't know. Yeah. But I think you're gonna see it because there's a demand for it, especially. You know, let's see how this tour does. I'm sure the, the tickets are going to sell well. I'm sure people are very excited about this. Um, and I think if, if a tour like that does well, it's only going to spark other bands to go, oh, hey, maybe, you know, we could be the next one. So let's. I think there's a co headline, like one night of the festival, Pearl Jam headlines. The next night is um, Foo Fighters. Then and then and then well, maybe like, I mean that you didn't mention maybe, Foo Fighters, but they've yeah. never they've, they've never, never slowed stopped. down. Yeah, they've yeah. never slowed down. But still, like Foo Fighters would have to be there. And then maybe like the Pumpkins are like right underneath the like the major headliner. Um, and then it have all these other bands like Alice in Chains, even though there's different iterations. But Alice in Chains and STP, and then it just goes down the line. Um, I think that would be very yeah. I think cool. I I get. The, with Alice in Chains, I there they that has been such a thing for there's such a different lineup for so long. Well, not even yeah. a different lineup, just a different singer for so long, and he's so good. He is. He's great. I it's see that, that's like what I like about it. it's a different era kind of of Alice in Chains. Yeah. It's not like trying to be. It's not like I say. It's not like Journey trying to be no. Steve yeah, Perry. You're you know? right. You're right. <laughs> and STP is kind of doing the same thing too. They got a singer that's very. Sounds extremely like Scott Weiland. So they're, they're kind of yes. going down that journey route. But that, you know, whatever. That's that's okay. It's, you know, it's still He's the brothers. He's even got the stage, the know. same stage presence. Oh, really? Does he? Live. It's very similar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Very well, you know, we'll see. But I think that's an idea I have. So I think it'd be a great, a cool festival kind of a weekend. Well, why don't you talk so, to your peeps? So you can get that I'll talk to my on. peeps about this. We'll, we'll get, it, right, we'll get it on. Yeah. What All else right. is going on in the Dataverse? Uh, well, hey, you know, we've talked a lot about Mick Mars and Motley Crue on this show recently. Um, Mick has finally, well, is going to release his first solo record, which he's been trying to release. He's been trying to get solo material out for a long time. He just couldn't get it together because of commitments with Crue. Um, and so obviously with everything that's happened recently, he's now had lots of time and he released his first single, uh, Loyal to the Lie. And have you heard it? No, it's freaking killer. Let me do. Who, I just is anybody say this. singing on it? Is it or is it just instrumental music? No, it's sing. It, there's a great. He has singer. like a now, singer. Of I'm, I'm gonna forget his name. Uh, I'm gonna look this up while you uh, comment. You, on you know it. what so you singer I thought this. is? No, I have not heard it. But you know what singer I think is incredible is the guy that used to sing with Nikki Six from Six AM. 
I, I don't know what his name is. I'll Google it up now because it's worth like knowing his name because I just think he's. I want to say it's J. I'm gonna. I just saw the last name and I want to say the first name is Jason. Jason Bunton, maybe is it Jason? Let me look this up um, because this guy's really good. At least on the Loyal to the Lie uh, single that was released. Uh, this thing's coming out in February though, February 21st, maybe something around that time. Yeah. Um, let me tell you. F you, Nikki. F you, because Mick can still <laughs> freaking play. I'm sorry. I mean, this it, if if this if this one single is any indication of Mick's skill that still exists at his age and with his health issues, he's still got it. So I don't care what Nikki Six says. Like they made a big mistake doing what they did. I think they did. I think you're right. I think it's a really terrible way that this went down, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Ja uh, Jacob so, Bunton, by the way. Jacob, Jacob Bunton. Bunton. He's the, the singer on yeah. the. He's a singer on okay. most on every track except for one song. The guy from Six AM that I'm talking about is James Michael. Awesome oh, he's singer. Incredible. Oh my god, he's so freaking good. I should actually go and try to track down some of his more recent work or something because I really like with the Six AM. Um, he's a big producer. Songs that they put out. Yeah, he is. He's a he's a producer. Yeah, so he he's he's really good. Um, and I think he is still putting out material. So, and if you come across him, um, do yeah, he's um, he's produced a lot of um, he's like written songs and produced with a lot of like yeah. pop artists like Kelly Clarkson, he, he yep, and yeah. um, other people. Yeah, he's so. very active and he's been around a long time. And so the six a.m. Yep. thing when that came about was kind of like a, you know, I think people just start to get to know his name. But obviously, when you're behind the scenes doing production, you don't nobody really knows who you are in the mainstream. Yeah. So. Oh no, that um, yeah, Nikki's. I, I think the six AM stuff was awesome. DJ DJ oh, Ashaba uh, played guitar on that six AM stuff. <laughs> it's DJ it's, Ashba. You mean? D, oh, sorry, DJ Ashba. Sorry, incredible, incredible. He's stuff. another one. He's another. Yeah, he's another like, monster crazy guy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, whatever happened to him? Is he still? What's he doing? I have no idea. Oh, he was. Wasn't he playing with Guns N' Roses at some point? Right. Oh, he, he was. was. Like the old, he know, was. And, he was in. He was Slash in a lineup. Yeah. DJ DJ Shaba. He's he's it's a good DJ Ash, too. But... Like he actually spins yeah. DJ. No, he doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, he did a stint in. Um, he did a stint in GNR. Of course, he did. Yeah. There you go. So anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I think this thing is going to be absolutely killer. And Mick has already said he's working on uh, another album. So, hey, good for him. Cool, man. I can't don't wait. think with his health issues, I don't, I can't imagine the guy's going to tour. That's why he left Motley. But that's why he left touring Motley Crue. Yeah. And the band just decided, well, you're done with the whole band anyway. So screw you. Yeah. Um. But so I can't imagine him touring, but I could see him doing like. I don't know, would he do like a residency or maybe like a couple one-off dates or something like that? Maybe. That would be really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, you know? hopefully. Hopefully we see him. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this is a, a related to Motley Crue. Uh, Don Dawkin, if you are a Dawkin fan, you might get excited about this. Yes. Um, he has Love confirmed him. that Netflix is making a movie about the band from the 80s. Really? Yeah, and it's the same director as The Dirt, which, of course, was the movie Motley Crue. Um, about Motley Crue. Interesting. So, you know, I don't think it's obviously going to have the same cachet and same uh, appeal as the Motley Crue stuff. I'm interested in it. I'm interested. So, you know, interestingly, um, I think I shouted off shouted them this podcast out on our podcast before, but No Guitar is Safe, if you haven't listened to that Oh, great podcast it's incredible um it's it's like they sit down and they plug in and they play guitars it's run by jude gold from guitar player magazine and all other different things that he's done he, he's an incredible guy we'd love to get him on the pod yep um yeah so if you're listening to this jude we'd love to have you on um maybe he is who knows there's an off chance i mean come on uh hey, you never <laughs> he he did a um a no there's guitar an safe that anybody's listening to this that's <laughs> There's a No Guitar Is Safe episode with George Lynch, where they go and he yes. talks to George Lynch. It's a great episode. George kind of talks about his docking days, and he doesn't talk of them very kindly. <laughs> so yeah, so, kinda, so there's that. He goes back and forth, though, doesn't he? Like yeah. When, when you hear interviews with him, he's either like, you know, hey, it just isn't working out with the financials, and, you know, so we're just never going to do it together that's right, again. That's right. Or that's right. It's like he's bashing the band. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and George Lynch is a guy that literally, like, every time you listen to him on, like, sometimes he'll check in with um, 
with Eddie Trunk, and he's working on like a million projects at the same time. And oh, Jude, all at once. Jude Gold actually asked him, he goes, you know what? What? How do you still have this drive to do like all these like twenty albums a year or whatever you're doing? He literally does like three or four albums a year, right? Yeah. And he's he like, what? Like what? What is the um? What's the deal? And he's like, look, I'm still hungry. He's like, he's like, yeah, I had some success, but you know, it's not like I'm like a gazillionaire over here, you know. Um, he's no, like, hungry is winger. <laughs> That's right. But you know what I mean? Like, I no, thought wait, that was interesting. It, wait, is that a winger? I mean, I, I think... A, wait, Hungry's a winger song, right? Oh, God, I don't know, Dave. Maybe. maybe yes, it is. Know. Isn't it? Jeez, maybe it is. Been, like... you, you know winger better than I do. Um, but anyway, so George Lynch was talking about how, like, look, yeah, I, I had some success. Yes, and I've been, okay. He's like, I've been able to support my well, family by playing guitar, but it's not like I'm like a millionaire over here, you know, living in right. a giant mansion, you know? So he's like, I want to keep working. I want to keep going. Except so, he is. It's, I was going to say. <laughs> and then Jude's like, I don't know. This place is pretty nice. Because <laughs> yeah. they were in his home studio. He's like, I don't know. This yeah. place is pretty nice, George. <laughs> but he's, you know, but um, yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was an interesting little tidbit. But yeah, so the Dawkin... We'll see. This will be interesting, you know. Dot <laughs> exactly living in a mansion, but he is exactly living in a mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jude, Jude, Jude was like, I don't know. You're pretty high up here in the Hollywood Hills or wherever, wherever they were, you know. <laughs> hey, you know. But um, but do, yeah, but Dawkins, like Doc, Don Duncan is like he's such like a self-aggrandizing guy. So it's like, of course, he's like, oh yeah, they're making a movie. I'm sure he like lobbied Netflix damn hard to make a movie. Uh, you know, about yeah, I bet you're right. <laughs> so so I, did, I mean, it's not like I said, it's not going to have the same appeal as the Motley stuff. But you know, from a, a popularity standpoint, it's not going to do as well. But yeah, um, it's, I, it'll, it'll be, be interesting. Fun. I, I, I think it's awesome. It. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. Um, because when they piece do in of these news. movies, you always learn about other things with other bands in these kinds of movies, oh, yeah, too. So totally. I think that's an interesting like side piece to it. But yeah, let's get to the other news. This is kind of kind of big. We'll give you so you know how we're always really interested in what's going on with Ticketmaster and Live Nation. Um, it was reported today by the Wall Street Journal today, which is beginning of November. It was Who are they? Are they like the onion? The Wall Street Journal. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like a parody <laughs> paper um, that the Justice Department has launched an investigation, an antitrust investigation into Live Nation. Um, they're focusing on what, whether the company uses anti-competitive agreements with well, venues and artists. This is what we were talking about. Of course the whole they time. do. You know what they're what they're what they're essentially, you know, you know, what I imagine they're going to be accused of is. When you're an artist and you're going to go to a venue, you're going to, you want to put a show on a, 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 a venue owned by Live Nation, you have to use Ticketmaster, right? <laughs> yep. Um, you don't have a choice. And probably all kinds of other promotional companies and things as well, right? So so that's what's going on. And, you know, this is just a quick update to say we'll, we'll see what comes of this, but... Um, um, that's what it is. And a spokesman, a spokesperson for Live Nation said, we participate in competitive bidding for both artists and venue deals. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's all one <laughs> ecosystem. Like, how could they possibly do that? But whatever, you know, yep. innocent until proven guilty here. But I think we all know they're pretty damn guilty. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see. Well, who knows what the end result is going to be, but I don't see how this uh, it's certainly not it's certainly not like a a frivolous thing there's so much evidence on the table that's clear as day to the average consumer but you know we'll see yeah we'll see how it goes it it, it sounds like the w word on the street here is that um the justice department's going to file a antitrust lawsuit against them um by the end of the calendar year so we shall oh, see maybe there will be maybe some we'll justice be, we'll bring that to you when we hear it um <laughs> <clears throat> anyway what Moving else? on. What else we got? Oh, you know what? I I have to tell you, I um, I did not I did not queue up the dad joke. Yeah, where week. where's the? Um, are we doing on it? My, on my screen, but we are gonna do it. Okay, um, you tell me when I'm, you're ready. I'm, oh, I'm ready now. I just didn't have it on my screen ready to go. Okay. So I just... All right, it's the dad joke of the way. And now your dad, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So That's here we go. Dad loud. joke of the week. <laughs> so I say to my boss, boss, I'm sorry I'm late. I was having computer problems. Boss said, hard drive? Me? <laughs> I said, oh, Joe, oh, geez, you just screwed it up. <laughs> I hit the button by accident. <laughs> 
Let's sorry, start man. That over. Sorry, right, sorry. Give me the start, cue music. Start, start, give start me the music. Give me the music. It's the dad joke of the way. Sorry. <laughs> now go. So anyway, I said to my boss, "I'm uh, sorry, I'm late. I was having computer problems." My boss said, "Hard drive?" I said, "No, the commute was fine. It was my laptop." <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, good job, Dave. Okay. There you go. Good job. Well done. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> let's move on quickly. <laughs> Very fast. All right. Here um, we go. All right. We are, let's get to our listener mailbag uh, qu- or comment or question or whatever. Oh, you yeah. Call it listener the week. mailbag. So this came out of a comment out of our Facebook group. If you want to go check that out at Qatar Dad's podcast, come join. Yes. We'd love to have you. Um, this comes from uh, Ed Esposito, and he Ed Ed is uh, asking about uh, like what can we talk about the best forty or fifty watt amps of twenty three, and also can I fix the top two fifty of Rolling Stone, which we talked about? Last yeah, time. Dave could definitely fix it. Every, anybody, <laughs> I could, could totally fix that. I mean, any music fan that's not Rolling Stone people could fix it. I mean, it's ridiculous. My kids could fix it. Seriously, it's it's just insanely bad. How bad it is. So, but we talked about that. We're not going to beat a dead horse, Ed. Sorry to I say. I mean, the fact that Joni Mitchell wasn't number one, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I know. Why wasn't Joni number one? I mean, geez, number nine. That's not. That's just not good enough for her. That's terrible. Um, anyway, anyway, but what what do you think about the forty and fifty one? He's talking about new amps. So this is new where new amps of twenty three. This is where like I have to admit, like I'm not an expert on new amps of twenty twenty three. Um, but we can talk about 40 and 50 watt amps. Like, you know, however, I think we need uh, Philip from the 40 watt podcast. That's right. Because <laughs> this is literally what his podcast is named after. Named and after. And we need the host of the 50 watt podcast. And then the too. 50 watt. Two of them right. in the same room. That's right. That's right. You know, Philip's arch us. nemesis, the 50 watt podcast. <laughs> 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 he comes on. It's like, like Bane he ca- versus Batman. Yeah, he calls up <laughs> Philip and Philip's up. Hello, Fifty watt. <laughs> it's like si- it's like, it's like Jerry and Newman. Yeah, it's like Newman. Yeah, yeah. hello, fifty watt podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't really. So we we both purchased amps in twenty three, uh, but I mean my nothing. my amplified nation is a fifty watt, so there's that. It is, but um, the, but it was it was not it was not um, a new release of twenty three. It wasn't. Are there new releases that have come out that we don't know? I mean, so let's talk about the new amps that have come out, right? So the brand new amps in twenty twenty three that have come out, especially if you're talking about tube amps. Um, you know, the, the big release that just happened, which we'll probably talk about is a Supro customs series. Yes. Um, yep. we can get, that's we can in get our, into that. You know, we are going to be talking about that in Patreon. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. And if you want to hear our th- thoughts on that, I'll just give you my quick thoughts though, is we'll talk m- more about it there, but you know, something like, I don't even know if any of those is a 50 watt. I assume it is cause they're combo. They're one by 12 combos. So I think they are a 50 water. Um, so there's that. Um, the Black Star line that just came out, that new Black yep. Star line of amps that just came out. I think there's a 50 watt or a 40 watt, some, something rather in there. Um, I'd have to go and, and type it in and see exactly what it is. I don't like. Like I said, I'm not really, I'm not really an expert on this. You're not asking the right guys. But um, so yeah, I would check out Black Star. Those new Supro things I think are a little bit too expensive and not super affordable. Um, I think we did talk about the black. Speaking of Black Star, they also came out with the Mark III, the HT Club Forty Mark III. Those are extremely cool. Um, yep. The other ones that are not quite forty watts, but I think is the oh geez, what what are those other new Black Stars, Dave? That that came out. You talking about the Saint James? The Saint James, yeah. Is any are any one of those a they- forty water? Yeah, those are 50 watt. They, you have 50 watt options with those. Oh, yeah, yes. there's a 50 watt head. I'm looking at it right here. Yeah, so we'll, 50 I, watt I head. Mean, those are kind of like Fender y kind of Fender ish yeah. kind of amps, which are really, they. I've played them. They sound great. Um, so it depends what you want. Like, if you want, like, I mean, if we take a step back and then, like, I want, I'm looking for something in the 40 to 50 watt range, it really comes down to how much money you want to spend. I think if we want to do exactly. this, if we want to do this quickly, I mean, everything comes down to how much money you want to spend, like everything in the world, basically. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, thank you, right? the Dr. Phil gift. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, uh. <laughs> but if you're looking for something, like, let's say, like on the lower end, 
right on the lower end of cost, meaning say under, I don't know, under fifteen hundred around there, under two grand even, we could push it up even more. Um, you know, you have in the in the in the forty watt range, you have the Marshall stuff if you're a Marshall person, right? Um, you have the the DSL forty, which you can get in the head, I think, still, and you can get the combo. I mean, that's yep. the new ones. I think are better than the the old ones that uh, uh, Dave and I had. So that's a great option if you're looking for a Marshall E tone. And and don't forget the the DSL. You know, it has that kind of crunch channel, which is more of a plexi tone. So that's that's cool. Right. If you like, take the DSL and you don't use the dirt channel, it's a yeah. great amp because as far as I'm concerned, it really is a two channel amp yeah. with the crunch and the cleans. Otherwise the, the dirt channel can be And because of that out. because of that crunch, I'd probably recommend that over the over the origin. Um but Dave, yes, I didn't know. Having own an owned origin. both, I do you, agree. Do you, Dave? Okay, all right. So so there you yep. go. So there you go. Um the black In Star fact, I told we we had that conversation when I got yep. I purchased the origin thinking that I was gonna want like that better. And what did I say to you? I wish I had never sold my DSL because I liked it a lot better. Yep, yep, exactly. Um you know, the other thing for of well, forty one amps, like that black star that I was just telling you about, you know, that's gonna yeah, give the me St. James the, the St. James, they they come in like around um they're probably like around eleven or twelve in that range. Yeah. That's um, so that's on the lower end, I would and say. And they're fifty watts. Yeah. And they're great. Yep. I, like I said, I I played them. They sound fantastic. Yep. Um I think that's a very affordable for 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 the, what it is. It's a very affordable. Yeah, amp, it's a very it's a affordable it's option a, if you want it. Yeah, and and that's going to give you more of a Marshall tone as well on the Black Stars. I, I think sometimes people not overlook on that. Them. No, that's going to it's more of a you're going to get more like Fendery type of. Oh, not the same. Ch- sorry, not the same chain. I'm talking about the, the HT. Same James. I'm talking about the HT oh, the Club. HT, yes, the HT Club. Yes, of, the HT oh, Club. 40. Yep. Yeah, the HT yep. Club Forty is going to be like along the lines of that DSL. Um, but just a different flavor because yep. it's black star. But yeah, the St. James are more of like um, like a, a fendery kind of thing, from what I understand. Right? Is that right, Dave? I'm not yep. an expert on those at all. I can't really speak to them. So yeah, yeah, you're gonna get, that's the, you're gonna get more of that fendery kind of sound out of it than you are with the because those um the, those those HTs are great. I have one. I just sold one. Um, but yeah, you're getting a different, you're getting pretty. You can get some pretty high gain out of those HTs. Um, yeah, and it's great, but. You know, so if you, it, but you know, the in other, terms of other new amps that have come out. Oh, do you have another one? Well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tell you, these aren't new, but you know, they're new or and readily available. Is the EVH stuff? The EVH stuff. Yes. If you want to play anything remotely heavy, um, <laughs> I would actually recommend the EVH 50 watt head over anything that Marshall's doing in that lower price range. I'm sorry to say, as much as I love wow. Marshall. The EVH stuff is is just so good, such a Throw value for money. Wow. I mean, I think the the there's a version of the 50 watt. I don't. I'm not an expert on all the v- versions. Go check them out. But some of them have three channels, like the clean, the crunch, and like the really lead channel. I think I think pretty much all of the 50 waters have that. So go and check that out. Um, I think that's a great value. And you don't have to be like an EVH fan. If you want to play like crunchy stuff, if you want to play classic rock, um, they do it extremely well, extremely well. So that if I was going to go buy a lower, not a lower price, but like a mid-priced 50-watt tube amp that I was going to gig with, it'd be the EVH all day long, all, all day long um, would be oh, my well, pick for that. There you go. All right. Um, now, you know, if you want to go to the, clean stuff that's a whole other thing and you just go to a fender twin and you're done right and don't done. f around just get a fender twin if you want something like that or and if you if don't you want really to spend, don't want to f around if, you get the fender you get the tone master version and that's the best yeah you get the tone master right version. right philip <laughs> philip right, loves philip. the tone master just... you know the other thing is <laughs> and the other and the other thing is if you want a lower price kind of fendery clean you just get the hot rod deluxe and you end it that's right. right? Yeah. Because that thing will blow your head off. It's so loud. That's why it's such a you ubiquitous can't even play amp. in the same room. Yeah. Like you can't really go wrong with that if you're looking for a 40 watt, well, 40 watt amp that's well, like you, more you, affordable. You can go wrong with it. You can pump it to 10 and go very wrong, you know, but that's a whole Yeah. Other you don't want to do that. But, you know, a, F- a Fender Twin is not cheap either. So that's, I'm, I'm going a little bit over um, right. the price that, that price point that we're talking about. But, I mean, when you think about a 40 watt amp, you know, that's the, the, the original ones, I think were 40 watts. This is, you know, Phil, Phil's probably yelling at his, 
at his thing right now. <laughs> um, like, what the hell are you guys sure talking about? Because um, I think they made more of a high-powered twin as well um, that you can get that's like 85 watts. But there's definitely I'm not 40 getting involved watt, in this. There's definitely 40-watt the versions out there, too. Um, <laughs> so something to think about there. So. So there you go. All There's right, Ed, I hope we down. covered everything together. And, um, you know, if I was going to fix the 250 best guitars of all time, I'm going to have to put – I'll give you my top five. How about that, Ed? Because uh, I want to answer your question um, I, in no particular order because I've grappled with this for so long, and I've never really – and depending on the day, I have a different order. So I've never really kind of landed on a solid order for, for my top five. But here you go. And to go, Eric Clapton slash Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, and Jimmy Page. Ooh. Done. There's your top five. Ooh. Ooh, I silenced you. Yeah, no, did I, I mean, did I get look, it wrong? I, I mean, maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I think that's go ahead. A, look, I, I'm in general Let's agreement. Hear yours. I'm in general agreement. No, no, I'm not really ready to rattle off mine. Um <laughs> But well, I'm in general. That's, I'm that's in ge the fun of it. There might be like a little, maybe one or two switches on yours, but you know, for me, that's okay. What go it ahead, is. switch them out. Let's hear it. Go, do it. Tell me, tell me yours again. So you're hesitating. You're hesitating. Tell me yours again, so I can, you so agree. I can know. You agree? Just agree. Just do it. <laughs> I said, the two Jimmys, so Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, Slash, and Eric Clapton. Um. Sorry, I, I'm just going to put Clapton on the top five. I, I'm going to do it, and I don't care I would probably what you got to say. I, I would probably put Stevie Ray Vaughan in there before, he, like tough. right before he, Clapton for me. Okay, top ten for sure. Yeah, definitely Clapton is top I can't squeeze him 10. into my top five. And then I would put Gilmore in there, too. The fact that Gilmore is as low uh, down as he was is, is ridiculous, right? Listen, it's a tough list. It's and a Jeff tough Beck, list. Once you get all these people, right, it's like it's ridiculous, so... Well, wait a minute. This is, to qualify it, this is my top five. It is. Everybody, and what, we talked about this. Everybody's going to have a different Everyone's going to have their own. That's right. That's why Rolling Stone puts Joni Mitchell at nine. It's, it's ridiculous. It's dumb. Anyway. All right, anyway. But what, what else Shall do we, we want to? Let's move on to some gear. The gear. We, well, we what gear are we going to talk about? Little gear. Well, you, do you want to talk about these? Do you want to move this on to the Patreon? Do you want to move this topic to the Patreon and talk about something else? Or shall we talk about these new Supros that are Let's talk out? a little bit about the Supros because I, I think that's a fun thing to talk about because it's like, it, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting little tidbit that came out this week. So what, yeah. what do you think of these, Dave? Well, why don't you tell why don't you tell everybody what these <laughs> what's going on here? Because these are these are the, some uh, pretty nice Supros that are coming out made in the USA um that are going to be released when are they going to be released do we know are they released yet um i don't actually know did the they actually that. come out uh, you, you got me you got me man you got me yeah so you got well i oh you know on this show it's not hard for you to get me and me to get you um <laughs> but anyway yeah so but well have you have you had any experience with supros have you played a supro at all ever anything um, yeah, I've played the, I, I've played like, you know, the, um, the ones that are, you know, you know, overseas made, um, that kind of thing, you know? Yep. Okay. So well, these are going to be USA made. Um, they're, they're going to be coming out with, um, these two combo amps. Uh, the one is called the delegate custom and the ambassador custom. Um, and you know, they, they look pretty, they look very cool. If you, if you look at pictures of these things, you know, they kind of, they get the, they just, I mean, just like every other guitar, just every other piece of gear that you buy, half of the, half of what attracts you to a piece of gear initially is what it looks like, right? Let's yep. be honest. Yep. You know, um, and then you try it out and you decide whether you like it or not. Um, so, uh, I don't, I don't know a whole lot of, about these because I, I think, you know, I, I, well, let's be honest. I haven't gone out and, and listened to reviews of these things, uh, but I thought it'd be interesting to talk about this on the show. Because this is kind of a different, a different thing, um, you know, getting into this this realm for super, right? Because they they were never made. They, they, were they ever made in the USA? 
they, um, they, they were they were back in the day from what back I back in the day okay yeah they were not, like they were back in time. the day but not for a long time the ones that have been kind of readily available out there on the market and i feel like they've really struggled um they've they've struggled um over the years um because they had guitars and then they kind of discontinued the guitars they had the the amps that I think are still out there, but they're always like heavily discounted. So I think they've been struggling. So this is this is a big kind of turnaround for them to release made in America, you know, supposedly handmade amps. And this is where it gets interesting because I don't know how well. Hand, that's what they're saying. I don't know how be. handmade they are. Um, well, the delegate the delegate custom is going to be a, is a one by they're both one by twelve combos, um, twenty five watts. The delegate custom. Um, Okay. With Celestian Greenback yep. comes with it. But at three um, grand. A three grand, yes. I mean, they're three, a little price. Three grand to me is completely out of control for an amp that, like, you know, I mean, maybe it's hand wired, but three grand, right? And it, it seems like there is some PCB boards in it, which means it's not hand wired. So it's like, what, right. what exactly is going on? I don't want to mean to be like a hand wired stop, but three grand is a lot of money. Right. <laughs> For a one by 12 combo. I mean, we're not talking about like a well, fire breathing 100 watt head. We're talking about like and you're not, a 25 I mean, watt combo. Like what? Let's be more Dude. specific, too. I mean, it's not that much more, but you're talking the delicate, the super, the, the, the uh, delicate custom, delicate, the uh, delicate, delicate. Did I say delicate? The, the delicate custom is going to be, <laughs> it's going to come in around 33. And the ambassador custom, which is a 50 watt. Um, is coming in at 35. So, you know, that's a pretty hefty price tag. And uh, despite it being a made in the USA, you know, customish kind of amp, um, it, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like, are there, I, again, haven't heard them, never played them, obviously. Um, but yeah. I got to imagine for the price, there's got to be other options out there that, you could probably come in a little bit lower than that and get something yeah, I mean, better. Yeah, I mean, it's a little ridiculous. Like, unless you really want that sound, right? Like, we've talked about this before. Like, Joe Perry has a Correct. has a little Supro amp that, you know, is like a made in the old, like, kind of vintage one that he uses. Yes. And he mics it up. And, and, he and loves you're, you're hearing it. that, yep. right? And you're hearing that on the records. So, like, if you're really into that sound and you want it, you know, Jimmy Page supposedly used them as well. So it's like, you know... If you're into that sound and you really want it, I mean, maybe this is the sound the closest you're going to get. Um, so, you know, for those people, great. I, I just think, like, for what it is, it just seems way too expensive. <laughs> but, you know, that's just me. That's just my I, opinion. I I agree. And, I mean, the sound, obviously the sound, you're talking about tonal different, big, big tonal differences. But yep. if you're going to come in at this price tag... You know, I, I mean, do you go Amplified Nation? Do you go some other kind of a boutique -y kind of, you know? Yeah, I think you do. I think you could do where you know it's really handmade with care and, um, you know, they're going to really stand behind it. Not saying Supro's not going to do that, but, you know, they have yeah, this kind of... how do we know these aren't made with care? They have this kind of history that it's like, I don't know. I just don't know. Like, it's... It's like because of all the are you, screwing are you around. You doubt, are you Yes. Are you doubting Because of all the screwing around they've done with, like, you know guitars and you know cheaply made amps and all this stuff it's like i don't like i don't really know um well maybe this is kind of a somewhat of a rebirth then in, in, a, in a in a way for them maybe it is um, you know maybe maybe it is i think i think that's what they're trying for it to be and i hope i wish them luck i hope i hope it happens <laughs> maybe now, these things are just going to be so good that people can't live without them i, I don't know so now what, what were those like what were the smaller um combos that that were kind of i don't want to say popular but were kind of like more of a thing like last year yeah um you saw like all over the place what were they were they obviously overseas made um i forget what the heck which, which super it was what it was like the was called, um but yeah the one that like, that like that has like must have been like 15 watt maybe maybe the delta king watt. i think it's it was the, the delta king the delta king yeah the delta kings are what's always out there and they're fairly cheap and you know yeah, they're 15 they're watts cheap, they, yeah they're not terrible they sound they're not good, that bad though. no they sound they're not pretty that good. bad they're not that bad and the, the black magic is another combo those are the 25 watt combos they they sound pretty okay, good yeah, i'm, right. I'm not going to lie watt. yeah the ones that they are do. the ones that are kind of emulating the joe perry one are the 64s super and the 64 reverb these are 1 by 8s i i i i've played those <laughs> i i just don't see the hype 
I mean, a one, it just doesn't have the sound for me. I'm sorry to say, um, you know, maybe these it's are a little a, bit better. It's a thing. It's a, yeah. it's a different thing. It's not, you know, it just like every amp, you know, it's, it's, it's got, it's, it's, it's to taste. So if it's not your thing, you're not going to like it regardless of the price. You could put the most expensive amp in front of me. And if, if it's not the, yeah, exactly. it's not the tone I'm looking for, I'm going to hate it. I mean, these, you know? these do, lo- I'm looking at them now. These do look elegant. Um, th- they look great. This one is called the, um, the, or is it? I really do. I like the aesthetic. The delegate, the aesthetic, the delegate custom. The delegate custom. Yep. It's thirty two ninety nine. Thirty two ninety nine. I told. That's what I just I mean, said. This Coming is thirty three. This is crazy. It's expensive for what it is, but the aesthetic is very cool, and I think and maybe that they is sound great. It, I don't know. know. I, I I agree with you though. For that kind of money, it's like that's boutique. We're gonna have to go play these and handmade find out. prices. That's for a twenty five watt combo. That's mega mega money. Um. I wonder when these are coming out, though. I've been scrolling around looking for uh, looking for some info. I got to imagine very soon because they made the announcement recently. Um, oh yeah, I think they probably. I mean, can you get them on Sweetwater right now? Can you uh, look at? Uh, let's go on Sweetwater. In fact, I'm already. Can there. I get them on um, Sweetwater? This is the question. Let's see. Let's find out if it's on Sweet because if it's on Sweetwater, they're available, right? You're gonna uh, buy them anyway. One. Let's find out. I mean, you can definitely pre-order these. When are they going to be due? It's so good. Pre, uh, you can pre-order the uh, the delegate. Oh, so it's uh, let's the see. delegate it's combo. It is not telling me when they're going to be released, but it will let you pre-order it. All right. And um, yep, no release date. So so we, let, let's they, just. Did you say the specs, Dave? When I was looking up. 312 AX. Three twelve AX. Three twelve AX. Yeah, seven yeah, tubes. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, specially voice three band EQ. So there you go. Um, Twelve eighty seven tube uh, driven spring reverb. Um, Cathode. Now the ambassador also has an option to drop it, drop it from fifty to thirty five, which I don't know how much of a help. Oh, that's that is, cool. But, All right. Know. How much is that? That's one? cool. It's cool. That's the thirty five. Oh, that's one you said that was thirty five. Jesus yeah. Christ. It's expensive, man. Lots right? of money, man. Are. Lots of money. Um, but hey, maybe they sound absolutely killer, and it's the sound you're looking for. And yeah, that's what you want to spend because if you're going to get into some of these uh, other boutique amps, like you know, with Amplified Nation and some others, you know, you're kind of no. You're, that's a you're good point. That you're you're going to pay that money. Um, you know, even getting you know, you're not you're not quite up to three grand when you if you get something like a um, um well, no, I guess you do. Like the I don't well, know, you, Friedman you, doesn't really have a lot of combos but they have some combos so yeah the freedman combos are probably a, you know around there if not a little bit less um i know the soldano like the 30 watt soldano was like 3700 well, so, yeah, bucks let's, yeah um, <laughs> we won't need to talk about those cause so that's, that's different blow, but um blow this out of the, out of the water. yeah but um yeah i mean you know w- but at the same time you can get a made in the usa hand wired uh, deluxe or princeton for less than that right well, aren't the Friedman? Yeah, but there isn't a free. What's the what's the Friedman that's like forty watts? Um, the dirty the, Shirley, uh, not the dirty Shirley. Uh, is it the twin sister or something like that? What's well, it called? The, the twin sister. Yeah, there's that. That that's the one that has the dirty Shirley and like something else in, the, in there. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm thinking of then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's expensive. That's around thirty four, thirty five. Yeah, that's it? true. I mean, Friedman something, is definitely isn't commands it? Or something upwards of that price. Yeah, Friedman definitely commands a premium. So you're right. Like you're in that Friedman range um, for that kind of stuff. And but but it is interesting that like these are closer to the the made in USA. You know, supposedly hand wired Fender stuff. And you know, those are cheaper. I mean, are they cheaper? Let, let me just confirm that before we. I go spouting off. Yeah, about we need this. we need some fact. We need to hire if you're if you are interested in joining the podcast. <laughs> we can't pay you, but if you want to be a fact checker, you can uh, totally do to that. If you want to, like, we, we, yeah, you, yeah, but we we have to like be able to text you in the show when you get back to us. Um, if if any if any podcast if any guitar podcast needs a fact checker like a full time fact checker, it's the Guitar Dads podcast. Let me tell you. So let me see go. what I can find um, um, on Sweetwater on this. Okay, so. The hand wired deluxe twenty watts, so that's comparable, is three grand. So okay, so they're so they're basically in the money on this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're basically in the 
and and does it say I mean, i'm sure they've done their market research yeah so yeah they're I, basically you know, in these... the money hey, they do say hand wired um so there's that so... yeah all right well let's move on we got some other well actually do we want to take more of this gear because we do need to talk about um uh, the new harley bentons that came out because i find these to be interesting um and also the hx1 has been making some waves too should we take that over to the patreon or do you want to talk about the it hx1 yeah i think we're at we're at enough time here i think we're coming up to the end of the All guitar right. dads podcast so the well, if you want to hear more and, and hear, hear our thoughts on the HX-1 um, and you want to hear some thoughts on these uh, new Harley Benton tube amps that came out, um, affordable gear, then uh, head over to Patreon. Um, if not, then uh, then you're not going to hear our takes, which really won't let you down that much. Won't uh, let anyway, you down. so th thank you. Let's uh, we'll wrap this thing up. We'll take this thing in for a landing. And thank you to all our loyal listeners. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Thanks for coming back each week. And uh, if you're new to the podcast, we hope you enjoy this. Please come back next week uh, where there'll be more hijinks and uh, maybe some new fact checking. Yeah. Um, and again, like I mentioned, Patreon, if you want to go support the show, we would love it. Thank you to our current patrons. And if you want to be one of them, go over to patreon.com slash Guitar Dads Podcast. If not, then please come check us out at Guitar Dads Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Come join the group. Have some fun there. It's free. And um, for now, I think that was this week's Guitar Dads Podcast.